Welcome to Bridging Generations, an Age UK Norwich podcast, brought to you by the communities team at Age UK Norwich and Norwich Together, connecting younger and older people to discuss a range of different topics and themes and to share their experiences. This podcast contains discussions of war and the loss of family members, which some listeners may find difficult. Hello, welcome back to Bridging Generations and AGK Norwich podcast. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Shirley, an AGK Norwich community member. Uh, first of all, how are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and today we're going to be mostly discussing your life and what it was like growing up during World War II. Uh, so I don't know if you could just provide maybe a brief overview of how old you were, what circumstances you were in in that time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a different life then to what it is now. But I was three when the war started and um, my sister was five. We lived in a council house in Eltham. That was in Kent then. It's now in London. <laughs> and um, yeah, I had, a, you know, a normal sort of childhood up, up until I was three, I think. But um, eventually I noticed that my dad had gone away. Nobody told me he'd gone to war or anything. He just disappeared one day. And um, I didn't know anything about that at all until after the war. Um, when um, uh, mum got a, a letter to say that he'd been, he was killed. He was a prisoner of war in the Japanese camps and um, he died. He, he wasn't yeah. killed. He died of so something. And um, so that's all I've got of my dad. I know nothing else. I don't know what he looks like. No idea. But um, that was then. And uh, then we had a normal childhood. I went to school when I was three and a half in a little school up the road that we could walk to easily. We could play in the streets because there were no cars there. One neighbour had a motorbike and sidecar. That was all that was in our street. The war started, which meant nothing to me. Um, but uh, we had a shelter dug into our garden so we could run down there if we needed to. And um, it was so normal. That's, that was my life. I knew nothing was going on, really. Heard guns sometimes. But, of course, a couple of years later, we started seeing airplanes and things coming over and searchlights. So it was exciting. <laughs> you know, I wasn't frightened because I didn't understand what was going on. So it was just a normal life for me. I mean, we had our windows broken through bombs being dropped and uh, we had to go through the blackout, which was quite funny, really, because we couldn't see anything where we were going or anybody. It was so, so black. You can't realise how much it is dark when you've got no lights, street lights at all. But, you know, we used to go to the cinema once a, once a week and um, that was it, I think. That's, that was my life. Um, but it was such a di different life to what we know now. Um, there was no national health service at all. There was no um, uh, welfare. No, but my mum didn't get any welfare, though she was alone with two children. I didn't get anything at all. Eventually, Dad's pay came through because he was still in the army, they thought. And um, so he, mum got part of his pay. But till then, we had nothing. And um, I don't know how mum managed, actually. I can't imagine. But she did. And uh, her life went on. And um, then an aunt came to live with us because she lived in London. It was safer to be where we were. Um, but then it became dangerous there. And uh, we were going to be evacuated, but I didn't go. My sister didn't go. We, I think we were the only children left in the street. But um, mum didn't want us to go, so we didn't. And we just carried on life. It was normal for us to hear planes going over to see ACAC guns going off, to see, um, oh, um, those lovely um, blimp, what do they call them in those days? I can't remember now, but I love those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, had a, I had a toy one. It's like a balloon with ears, and um, it just used to float in the sky to deter. I'm not sure what it was supposed to deter, um, but it just floated over us all the time. And um, life, as I say, was so, so much different then. And... Um, had nothing, we had nothing, but that's okay. Mum had chickens, we had eggs. Eggs yeah. we had and we had cabbage. And we had old oh, Russian books, which was quite funny. 
um, because you were allowed so much. Um, you, a little bit of cheese had to last you the whole week. How she did it, I don't know. Sugar was rationed, or most, all food was rationed. No sweeties. We didn't get any sweeties in those days. Um, I can remember the first time after the war, and I went in, Mum gave me a threepenny piece. I don't know if anybody remembers the threepenny piece. It, uh, no, a little square co coin, and um, to go and buy some sweets. And uh, it was a thrill of my life. We checked, well, Threepence, you wouldn't believe it, but threepence went so far. Mum said, spend a penny today, and spend a penny tomorrow. And I got loads of sweets, a penny. <laughs> <laughs> it was lovely. But we didn't, um, that was a real treat after the war, I remember that. But the, the biggest treat I can remember was going up to the shops. And I could smell something. I didn't know what it was because I hadn't smelt it before. But it was a banana. They were yeah. in the shops. And we could have, I think, three. And um, I'd never smelled anything like that. I can, can honestly say I wasn't sure what to do with it. You had to feed <laughs> it. <laughs> you know, it was something exotic as far as I was concerned. And um, it wasn't, you know, I didn't like them that much, but it, because it was a thrill to have one, we ate it. And um, life was so funny in those days when you come to think of it. I was never ill. If, well, I, I must have had colds. Of course I had colds. But we didn't go to doctors because you had to pay for the doctors. Yeah. And, um, yeah, you couldn't just go and, you know, to the doctor. You had to be treated, mum treated us at home. And the only time I remember a doctor coming when I had measles, and he did come to us then, I have no idea how much that cost. You can't imagine, can you, how much that would have cost. I know once we, mum took us and it cost her two shillings, but only because the doctor knew of her circumstances and said, oh, just give us two shillings, but it's also more than that. But because he knew of our circumstances, he was very kind. But, yeah, apart from that, I was never ill. Measles, that's yeah. all I had. Yeah, and nowadays you get everything, don't you? Yeah, definitely. There's a lot, yeah. of, um, <laughs> lot of everything. A lot of everything. Um, yeah, I'd just like to go back to, first of all, thank you for speaking so openly there and it's a great overview of what your life was like during that period but I feel like it's really I think it must be obviously horrifying to live through a war but as you say you were so young do you feel like in retrospect after the war maybe you um had to grow up a bit quicker than the usual child had to yeah definitely eventually after the war mum had to go to work get some money she wouldn't clean other people's houses and I became a latch latch key kid have you heard of those I haven't known used, <laughs> no well mum used to tie the key through the letter on a piece of uh, string and tie it to the letterbox inside so I knew how to put my hand in the letterbox drag the key out and let myself in the house of course <laughs> and during the winter I'd never told my mum this but, we, but my sister and I decided it was really cold. We just had one fire in the lounge. We'd watch mum do it. We knew we had to have matches and paper and wood. And um, we did all of that, lit the paper under the wood. And it wasn't catching. I said, well, mum used to put paper up. And she did. Round the, um, the chimney opening, she'd hold a paper up. So it drew the flames up, which made the fire light quicker. But we, yeah. me and my sister, we, we got the, <laughs> the paper burnt. We didn't quite know what to do with it. <laughs> and I thought, we never told mum that. She'd have gone mad. <laughs> but we, we survived. We had to. Yeah. And we cooked our own tea. And first of all, we decided my sister was the grown-up one. Would you like baked beans? Yes, please. And when they came in, there were baked beans on bread. Can you imagine? <laughs> Not toasted. Just yeah. soggy. <laughs> <laughs> well, since having it, I, I presume you've had it on toast since. Yes. What do you prefer, on toast or yes. not toasted? You can't even find a bread when it's on. It's <laughs> smothered in, in beans. It was horrible. Oh and you used to put the butter in the, it was an oven next to the, to the fire, in the oven just to melt it a little bit so mum could use it because my sister and I forgot all about it. And when it came out, it was just a load of battery water, <laughs> and it's horrible. It went rancid. It smelled awful. So we missed out on the butter that week. Yeah. 
But my poor mum, you know. But we managed. We did grow up very quickly. Mm. We used to polish the floor and polish the furniture because we had this shiny, I suppose it was leather. I don't know if they had PVC in those days. And we used to do it for mum. Our little job was polishing the settee or polishing the floor. And my sister decided that it'd be more fun if we put the dusters on our feet and skate around the floor. <laughs> <laughs> How old were you when, when you were doing these sorts of things? It was, it, that was, uh, I was about eight, nine when mum went out and though the wall was still on, the lady next door watched us. She wasn't in there with us, but she watched that we weren't getting into trouble. And um, after that, when I went, I went to school, well, we went to school during the war too, but we had to go home quite often when the bombs got a bit dangerous. And um, uh, I don't know, uh, nine, ten, it was before I went to high, high school or secondary school in those days. Yeah. So quite young, but willing to play, you know, as well as work. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'd also like to just ask a question about, so you mentioned um, that, your, your dad fought in the war and unfortunately lost his life. Was he one of the, the recruit just for the war or was he already in the, the armed forces? No, he was a recruit and he was quite old for the war. You know, I don't know, they liked to take the younger ones and even he was married with two kids, but he had no trade. So he decided to volunteer because he knew money would be coming in then, yeah. which it was, yeah. We had some money a little bit after that. And he went to Singapore and um, was captured and went to Changi, I think it was, um, where he died. But nobody's got any real records. I've got a little piece of paper with um, Japanese writing on it to say that they didn't even get to date of birth right, but, they, uh, but nothing else. Yeah. When you found out that news and since then, was there any support offered to you and your family or what were the attitudes to having had someone pass away at war during well, those times no, yeah I, I got, you know i'm 85 now and i've never met any other child my age who lost their dad there must be thousands somewhere yeah but nobody ever mentioned it in fact when i went to school, oh i got the only concession i got was school dinners free everybody else had to pay and i was you know i dinner monitor used to come and take it and suddenly the teacher saw it and said why do you have free dinners? So I had to say in front of the class, because my dad died. Sorry. Well, that's really, I mean, that, uh, that's so brave of you to say then. After all these years, it's so stupid. And I didn't, don't even not at all, that. not at all. Yeah, um, people's attitude was wash it all away. It didn't happen. Hmm. Nobody really talked about it then. Uh, after a few years, they did, but. Yeah. Uh, it just came back from the war and life carried on. Yeah. Do you think mm. part of those attitudes were people at the time maybe didn't know how, how to um, talk about it or was there a sort of shame within society that they went I to war and yeah, all these I people lost yeah. their lives? Yeah. I think because the government had, had, hadn't had to deal with that anymore and we were just, we just had to manage. That was life, you know. Mm. They didn't come around and say, here's a basket of fruit or is Nick tomorrow's dinner or anything like that nobody came like that yeah so I, I and it's awful because they're not lucky but they are looked out after a little bit better than it used to be yeah yeah, mm. yeah people are sort at least they've got the national health service you know you just you know you're going to be okay and we were what was that 1947 that came in yeah but um, I was, I'd never stopped a day in bed. I'd never stopped because I had a cold. It's just in, in you, isn't it? You just have yeah. to carry it. Mm. Yeah. And I think that um, probably transitions quite well into talking about the NHS. So you actually saw the NHS be created and its development. Mm. What, what were maybe your thoughts then, if you remember, or what were the initial... Um, opinions on this new national health service being created yeah well for the people like our family the working class family actually was such a milestone real milestone because people used to pay for their illnesses which is fine if you're having money come in you know you could have a sore throat and go to the doctor and get something but um for the working classes they couldn't be ill 
though yeah. they were, of course, but, you know, they couldn't afford to be ill. People say that now, but you really couldn't afford to be ill in those days. So, yeah, it was a great thing. I think it's one of the best things ever happened in this country. Um, but that, that only applies to people like me. We are not rich. We've never been rich. If I could afford it, I probably would pay for my own, just so the National Health Service, save the National Health Service the money if I could afford to pay for my own, which I can't. So, um, yeah, it's such a grand thing. You can never knock that. I mean, now it's overwhelmed and uh, everybody goes there for everything. And I wouldn't dream of bringing 999 for, a, you know, a swollen ankle or something. Yeah. <laughs> you just wouldn't do it. I don't, go, I don't see my doctor from one year to the other, or, except to get my flu jab until two years ago when I had breast cancer. And then they were marvellous, really mm. marvellous, yeah. And, um, yeah, I think, you know, it's really, you've really got to be thankful for that, yeah. that they created that. Mm. How do you think that they've re like the NHS throughout the years has developed so much to the point as as you were saying that people are, you know, use uh, it's is over overwhelmed most of the time. Yes, people use it too much. The little mm. things. Are, uh, I love my grandchildren, of course I do. But uh, you know, a cold and mum takes them to the doctors, and I think so. You don't need to go to the doctor for that. You, you, you're, you're open for about a week with that and you just you know, go home, stay safe and warm and it'll go. It always goes. <laughs> As yeah. cold doesn't last forever, does it? And, mm. But they go straight to the doctors. They want antibiotics. That's why we're now they're not so good as they used to be. But, um, yeah, I think people rush to the doctors and the hospitals much too quickly. Yeah. It's part of life to be ill and get dirty. <laughs> Mm. I used to be so dirty when I was a child. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, so after the NHS was uh, created, you are now living through the decades um, following the war and the rebuilding process, not just for Britain, for near enough every country in the world. Mm. Is there anything that happened during that those early decades, maybe in the 50s or or the late 40s or, the, or even even up until the 60s that yeah, surprised you with um sort of the new world they were everyone was building oh, absolutely surprising just how far we've gone in the last oh, what, 80 70 years it's absolutely amazing we just never progressed that fast in the olden days everything had its speed you know you just went on this one speed and it might happen it might not but now it's Oh, gosh. I mean, we've been to the moon, for God's sake. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's unbelievable when you think about it, isn't it? Mm. Absolutely unbelievable. And who thought I'd use a computer? Uh, yeah. I sort of use a computer. But, you know, it's so, so different now. The children, I don't know if the children are any better off, actually. I think they know too much. They learn too much. They, they have to know so much these days. And they're not able to relax and be children it's also push 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 mm. i know the teachers got to get get their results and it's for their future but it's so hard i mean nowadays they have to do homework on their holidays i think that's so unfair <laughs> <laughs> i think yeah. i would have rebelled about that one <laughs> <laughs> well you were i mean if if you had homework when you were a child do you think you would have done it or no <laughs> i had it when i went to a secondary school yes yeah. i had um, well, yes and no. I mean, I did most of it. Um, normally, first thing in the morning, I, well, after I get up, had my breakfast, I'd do it before I went to school because I knew it had to be handed in that day. <laughs> <laughs> I was the same. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> I know. Oh, dear. Uh, the teacher read one of my poems out lunch, and it, I'd done it so quickly. And I thought, oh, I think that's mine. I didn't say anything because I didn't want the kids to know. It's like, he said, I won't name her because she'd be embarrassed. I thought, so right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, sounds like to me that the moon, the moon landing was a big, big Absolutely. one in terms of surprising how much the world yeah. had developed to get to that yeah, point. Cause I, yes, because we didn't hear a lot about it before it was about to happen, did we? I mean, yes, in science papers, I suppose, and the science community knew, but because we didn't have all the knowledge that we have now, we can just look it up or we can just switch on the television 
and there it is and most people got television in every room and yeah it is yeah. amazing isn't it so yeah. that was the first thing i no it wasn't the first thing i'd seen on television i hadn't seen much but that was amazing I, my television was so bad, actually, you could hardly see the little figures, but I knew what they were doing. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember your reaction? So you remember your reaction when you first saw it? Oh, absolutely yeah. amazed. Yeah, absolutely. And you look at it and you think, they can't be up there. They can't be up there. <laughs> but they were. Yeah, absolutely amazing. Yeah, we've made a lot, a lot of progress and the world is a completely different place. Absolutely. What, what do you think is that down to? I know obviously a big part of that is just development of technology, but do you think maybe after the war countries were now working together to develop or do you think there was it was just a, a time period before where maybe well, it, it was, was just a, a slower period and people weren't, yeah. the c- countries weren't focused on improving um, society? Uh, no, that came very slowly, improvements for society. It happens from, from the top down to mm. the bottom people got it, everything last, you know. But, um, it's a funny old life, isn't it? Yeah. You, you can see the improvements that happen now, but you can't see what they can do in the future. What do you think would happen? Then? You know, what improvement can they do? There must be lots, but I can't think. There's something about our, we're, <laughs> they're going to develop so so much on computers that there'll just be a brain that does everything. Yeah. But if they can't climb stairs, I don't know how they're going to do everything, do you? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, that's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> they can't get up there. Yeah. Yeah. No, so they reckon we'll be just brains. Yeah, but that's doing the way what? it's going. I'm, yeah, but doing what? We can't all be brains and no doers. You know, everybody, yeah. everybody at the works, from dustbin people to road sweepers, they're all needed. You can't look down on those people. Without them, we'd be up to our eyes in filth, wouldn't we? Yeah. They're so needed. It's like these drivers, they suddenly realise these big bosses, they can't drive their own lorries. They need tr- lorry drivers. So now they'll start offering them a decent wage. But mm-hmm. you have to go through life that way, don't you? Yeah. Someone has to stand up first and say, this is not right. Yeah. Mm. Now let's move on to after that period. Um, yeah. Just looking back at your life so far, what is something that you that you've done that your maybe proudest achievement, or something that uh, in your life you maybe when you were younger didn't think you'd do, but you did accomplish? I don't know. I did. Um, well, I suppose my proudest achievement is, of course, my children, yeah. and. Um, I was married early, I had children early, so they were virtually my life. And they all turned out so wonderful, all got lovely jobs, and now we've got grandchildren and yeah. great-grandchildren. Yeah, it's got to be the children. I went to work in London opposite the Dorchester Hotel, and, and that was a eye-opener to me. I'd never been to London before. And I saw the Queen Mother, saw a lot of film stars because they all stopped at the Dorchester in the hotel. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was just another life you didn't do. Uh, didn't dwell on that one but no I just went to work and earned some money um met my husband married and children you know and that's really I haven't done a big achievement ever I've just been on the periphery because my education wasn't yeah. as good I'm I'm gonna boast here I, I, my edu- I think my, I've got a good mind a clever mind I can remember things and I can outdo the question time sometimes but not often yeah. <laughs> But um, that wasn't what you did unless you were – not. I didn't know anybody that went to university, nobody at mm. all. So uh, now my grandson's gone, which is absolutely wonderful. Yeah. And, um, yeah. yeah, so no, there's no big achievement. I don't know. We went to Australia for two and a half years with the four children and the dog, which I, I loved. Yeah. I mean, I'd say the family is a big achievement, as you mentioned there. You've created well, uh, this this family, and your, your grandsons now going to university, and you're proud mm-hmm. of what your children have all achieved. Children, that yeah. must be really satisfying, it knowing is, that you were responsible for raising them and yeah. leading them to live these lives. Yes, and you know nobody, none of them got into trouble. God bless them. Yeah. And we knew quite a few boys that did, 
And um, yeah, it, it is an achievement, but of course it's not looked on as that sort of achievement, isn't it? If you go to the moon, that's an achievement. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that on your list for what you what you'd like to do? <laughs> I'm not sure about that one. <laughs> I'd like to be prime minister. <laughs> okay. <laughs> put, put right all the wrongs. I'd love to know. I'd, well, I'd yeah. like to be a little fly on the wall in during Parliament, where you can see Parliament, but in the little offices where they do all their little shenanigans. I'd yeah. like to be a fly on the wall mm. just to see what they say about everybody. Yeah. But, yeah. Mm. We did. I was held up at gun at knife point once. I used to, <laughs> I used to work in the garage and close up at eight o'clock. Fine in summer, dark in the winter, and I got these three men burst in with this knife and this um, what sort of machete it was actually, and, and a hammer. One had the hammer, and, um, <laughs> and they got away with the money. Well, they asked me where it was. It was in the till. I wasn't fighting over my money, and I wasn't going to fight over anybody else's money. <laughs> yeah. I would have given mine, you know, I wouldn't buy over money. And um, that was it. That made headlines. I was front page news. Would you believe that? Yeah, I mean, it, um, that's a scary, right? scary thing to happen. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it was. Of course, it was scary, you know, mm. but you, you come to the conclusion, I'm not going to let them ruin your life. You know, they're just people and nothing special. Yeah. But yeah, and what was it? Um, brave mother of four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And everybody thought they were down here, but they were. <laughs> 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 well, we were what we were marched at gunpoint across the, the um air field at Bahrain, I think it was. I don't know, a war had broken out in the Far East, Middle yeah. East. And um they wouldn't let us off our plane, but because once the plane stops, the air conditioning stops. So it just got hotter and hotter and hotter. The poor old pilot, he managed to negotiate to get the women and children off. Um, but he, he negotiated a bit more and he let the sword off in the end. But we had to be at gunpoint, you know, straight over there. Wow. <laughs> so, so, yes, it was sort of life. Yeah. But, yeah, the 50s, I was young. I was married at, in 54. So, really, my teenage years didn't happen. The 60s, I didn't, didn't happen to me. Everybody loved the 60s, but to me, I was a mum <laughs> changing mm. nappies and things. Mm. <laughs> so that didn't happen to me, but it's meant to be good. Yeah. So how old were you when you got married then? You were... 18. 18. Yeah. So that's quite so young, I haven't done it? anything really. don't know why. Yeah, very young. Mm. But um, that was my life and I loved it. You yeah. Know? And you mentioned there that you were working in, in a garage. At, um, what is... Uh, did you work any other roles? I know you mentioned when you were in, in London. Yeah, what was your favourite uh, job that you worked? It, well, I like London, but I, and we did typing and shorthand and stuff like that. But I liked it best when I went on the computer, not computers, they were um, not adding machines. What's the other one? Contometer. Is it Contometer? Yeah. God, that's a long time ago. And um, I just like numbers. I yeah. just like working with numbers and things so I went into the um into the um what department did they call it I don't know so I moved from the typing thing to the where we did all the invoices and things yeah I like doing mm-hmm. and I, I earned three pound 15 shillings three pound 15 shillings and the 15 shillings went on the railways to get me there for a week yeah 15 shillings mm. get me down to the next station now <laughs> I mean, that's probably something that um, is you've seen as well. As well, how much even money and the value of money is just completely changed massively. The, the ones that really angers me is the houses. Yeah, who's making all this money? I mean, we bought our first house, and we did that. With, well, we bought our council house when Margaret Thatcher said we could. I never voted for Margaret Thatcher, but I did that year. Just for selfish reasons, I <laughs> wanted to buy my um, council house, which yeah. we did for three thousand five hundred pounds. Mm. Yeah, and when we sold it, it was ten thousand pounds. We went to Australia, bought one for nineteen thousand dollars, and came back with I came back with eleven thousand pounds to buy a house here, which we could for cash in yeah. nineteen seventy six. Yeah, could buy houses for cash. Yeah. 
So how long were you in Australia for? Uh, two and a half, three years. Yeah. About three. It's my husband couldn't deal with it. He mm. wanted green grass. <laughs> he said. <laughs> <laughs> so we came back. Was, you know, yeah. If one's unhappy, you just come back. Well, I'd, I also like to talk about what what you're up to today. So what what interests you um, in your life at the moment, and is there anything that you're looking looking to do in the future? Um, well, yeah, my life now is very, very, well, very good, really. I mean, yeah. I, I go to I go three this afternoon. I'm going to exercise group. I do a bit of yoga. Nice. I, I, I keep saying Yoda. My bird is called Yoda. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's yoga. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and we go out. Friends go out to visit. We went last Monday. We went to Sandringham. Before that, we went to Buckingham Palace and Windsor. This year, we did Windsor. So we, we go out as much as we can, not as much as we used to, mm. uh, but we're just going out a little bit now. But we, I go exercises three times a week. Not that I need it, she says, <laughs> but I like it. <laughs> it's good to, I mean, I feel like for everyone, it's good to get out and do some exercise, it isn't is. it? Yeah, yeah. It is. just to do a bit and then go out and meet people. Mm. Yeah. We like that. Yeah. But yeah, but my life now, I mean, thank goodness for the pension. Mm. That, that's uh, got my husband's pension. And um, I can afford things now, but I don't, I don't really buy things. You, it's your life at the beginning, isn't it? I'm very mean, really. You know, I, I don't think I should buy that because I don't really need it when I think about it. So I don't buy it. Now, when you get married, you have everything. And there's no fun in that. You want to come in, oh, I've got my washing machine. I had my washing machine after I've got three children. Before that, was seeing the old scrub boards. They're very good, actually. Yeah. Yeah, so to have it all now, is, um, uh, you lose the fun, I think. But yeah. they wouldn't like it. Yeah, and, and these days it's, um, it's good for the children because they're being educated, thank goodness. Which is nice. Yeah. Um, I think we'll probably finish on just what what one thing have you learned, whether it even could be recently, could be um, earlier on in your life that really changed your attitude to something or really benefited you in the long term? Yeah, um, well, it's not to be, don't be selfish. There's nothing worse than selfish people, meaning, yeah. meaning. Mm. But um, I don't know, really. I think I learned to, I can manage. I'm okay on my own. Yeah. You know, from my younger days, I suppose. I don't need everybody. I mean, the first day I went to high school, I watched them because I'm opposite a high school here, all mums and dads and everything. I had to walk there. My mum was at work. I did it all on my own. You know, the letters come in. I answered them and read them because my mum hadn't learned to read because she was a generation beforehand. So, yeah, I learned to do it all. I, I'm quite self-independent, uh, much to my children's annoyance, because if <laughs> I want to if I want to put a, a picture up, I'll do it. Yeah. So I'll be able to, you know, why are you doing that, Mum? Because I can. When I can't, I'll call for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a great yeah. attitude to have there, isn't it? Yeah. 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 As I say, I had cancer two years ago. And I just went up the hospital. This is cancer, okay. You know, you've got to have this and got radiotherapy and an operation and all that sort of thing. And I just did it. And people thought, you know, I'm wonderful. I thought, wonderful. I'm just getting on with what I've got to get on with. <laughs> no, but so, it's, it's like really great resilience, isn't it? And not being phased yeah. by not being phased by problems that you got to face yeah. on your own. That's right. Yes, that's right. I mean, when we do, we had a widows group. We still got it, but we haven't been out for a long time. And um, some of the ladies said, I had to call the postman in because I couldn't knock a nail in. And I say, why couldn't you knock a nail in? It's not rocket science. <laughs> <laughs> and I, try, I think, sure, surely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's a lady. She can't do that. Mm. And someone says, I can't. What can't? What can she do? She couldn't do the gardening. And again, I think, why not? <laughs> Yeah. It's not a lot to it, is it? <laughs> Dig it, put a few plants in and watch them grow. I've only got a little garden I can, you know, I can show off now. Yeah, are, are you into your gardening at all? I love my garden, yes. It's yeah. just a 
I, I bought this bungalow. It's a three-bedroom bungalow. We used to live in Cromer when my husband was alive. Um, he always wanted to be by the sea, so we once he retired, we decided. Yeah, it's to a lovely there. place, though, isn't it? Yeah, it is, and I'd love to have stayed there. But we were on in a in a bungalow again. But we were on a sort of uh, the whole garden was on a slope, which Jim did beautifully, and it was huge. I couldn't do it to try and do something with the slope. I used to tie a rope round my waist, tie the other into a tree, and then let myself. <laughs> Down to do a bit of gardening, and I thought this is no, surely they're not going to be able to do that. That's, I mean, that's something I've never heard before. Sort of abseiling <laughs> down while uh, <laughs> gardening. Say, what are you doing? I'm just cutting the grass. But yes, it's a bit. I've had a lot of fun, mm. a lot of misery, a lot of fun. Mm. But you know, that's just life, isn't it? Yeah, comes mm. with the ups and downs, but yeah, the um, just, just life of less living. Exactly that. And um, I feel like that's a great image to leave on you, abs- abseiling down a... Um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it laughs> and uh, gardening. <laughs> it was ridiculous, but I did it. I told my friends that they don't believe me. And I told my friends I do spot welding. I did in Australia spot, we- spot welding. And yeah. my friends said, you did spot welding? I said, yeah, I did spot welding. That was quite a nice job too. Oh, yeah. I used to get a bit burnt with that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I've got to say, I've, I've really enjoyed speaking to you, yes. Shirley. Thank you for sharing. Um, yeah, and thank you for having me. No problem at all. And um, thank you to anyone who's listening who's got to this point, listening to Bridging Generations and AGK Norwich podcasts. Join us next time. If you need support around living a healthier, more fulfilling life, you can call Age UK Norwich on 01603 496 333 for advice. If you are in need of speaking to someone as soon as possible about your mental health, you can call the Samaritans on 116123, free from any phone, or on 0330 094 5717. Local call charges apply.